I also like to request Mr. Rajesh Raju, founder and CEO of Achala Solutions and member National SME Council, NASCOM. Please take your seat, sir. I'd like to request our Vice President, Mr. Ravi Kumar, to give the opening remarks. I would also like to request Mr. Nirupam onto the stage. Thank you, Mr. Nirupam. The director has already given the opening remarks and she says give the opening remarks. So such mistakes don't happen, not mistakes, such overlapping doesn't happen once you convert to digital transformation happens in your company. So that's the topic for the day. So all MSMEs need this. In What little I know about MSMEs, okay, I'm in MSMEs since 37 years now. Vijay, more than that? I don't know, Vijay knows more than me. Uh, so, a lot of duplication happens. A lot of uh, the director gives some instructions, then the lower person gives instructions, then the manager gives instructions, then the, it said, no, what to do, how to do, and when to do, those three things. And all three things are being followed by the MD of the company in MSME. So, he becomes the HR, he becomes the director, he becomes the technical director, he becomes the admin director, everything. But once you convert to digital transformation happens in the company, it's a different cup of tea. And today's scenario, a lot of MSMEs uh, do under, go through financial crisis. It's, it's common. Any MSME will have financial crunch and financial crisis. And what I did as a mistake, I don't want you people to do about 20 years back. So every month, the moment month starts, we give focus on the raw material, the finishing the product and sending the product, getting the money and trying to do this. And equally, we should give importance. The amount of importance we give for raw material, we also need to give importance for converting the company into digital transformation. So that is the take which we need to take. And that's the principle which all the MSMEs should have when they start or the startups when they come in. They should give equal weightage when they are uh, looking at the financial cash flow and things like that. They should give importance to starting the digital transformation from day one, starting implementing the digital technology into it from day one. So with this view, words, I uh, will not stand between you people and the eminent speakers because they are going to guide us all through the day till the afternoon about how to start implementing digitalization of the company from the day we start the company. All the best. And uh, I'm happy to see that all of you are here to learn and then implement in your respective companies. Thank you. Now I'd like to request Mr. Mohan Raidu, who leads the ICT committee at FTCCI, to share a few words and set the tone for the conference. event. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Mr. Ravi Kumar, for uh, giving you uh, the required impetus. <clears throat> uh, I welcome all of you to this event. So, I first welcome Mr. Nirupam, the director of NASCAM from Calcutta. Uh, Mr. Our uh, chief guest of the day, Mr. Aram Rajgaru, uh, Dr. Aram Rajgaru. He is the founder director of TIHCL, Telangana Industrial Health Clinic, and also he has been the pioneer of the MSME in the uh, in the world as, as such, I can say. So, <clears throat> Mr. Rajesh Raju, and uh, all of you, 
Dr. Placenti. And uh, so this today is the workshop on the digital uh, MSME digital adoption program. As the, uh, as the chair of the ICT committee of FTCC, I have uh, had the privilege of uh, working with MSMEs in within FTCCI and their power to uh, do the digital journey. And today's event on the uh, digital transformation is the you know testimony for our commitment to the MSME journey. So you all heard that uh, the digital is our perish. So that was the saying. Uh, it has been uh, been on rounds. Now it's a must. Actually, all this, this it was an option, but it's no longer it's an option. You have to uh, adapt it for uh, existing and uh, growing. So that's the scenario today. And digitalization and digital technologies provide enormous opportunities for the growth of the industry. But at the same time, there are challenges in uh, adopting the digital technologies. So today's workshop will provide the solutions and strategies to uh, to address these challenges in uh, digitalization and digital technologies. I thank all the speakers for making speakers and audience for uh, making it convenient to attend this uh, workshop today. And I'm sure that uh, the today's workshop will provide good inputs for your growth, for the growth of the MSMEs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mohan Daidu. I would like to request uh, Mr. Rajesh Rajo, founder and CEO, Achala Solutions and member National MSC, uh, SME Council, NASCOM. I would like to say a few words and introduce Mr. Rajesh to the audience. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Raju has extensive experience beginning as a principal engineer at the Sycamore Networks from 2000 to 2004 and later as a strategy manager at Accenture. In 2009, he founded the Attila IT Solutions Private Limited and served as the CEO. From 2011 to 15, he was a director at the Race Education. In 2015, he co-founded City Life Incorporated, serving as the CTO until 2020. Mr. Rajesh earned an MBA from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business and a BTEC from IIT Madras. A big round of applause. We have some stellar speakers today. Over to Mr. Rajesh. Good morning, everyone. I think uh, uh, it's a good start to the whole discussion today. I think digital marketing, I think it's a field which everybody is close to heart today, right? So I think uh, Ravi Garu has said, unless you do the digital you know, digital transformation in your company, it is very hard. So what I'm trying to do today is I'm representing a little bit of NAFCOM. So I'm part of the SME Council. So as everybody knows, NASCOM is National Association of uh, Software and Services Company. So I represent Hyderabad, sorry, AP and Telangana region as part of the from an industry point of view. So what we are trying to do at NASCOM is we are trying to reach out to the companies, trying to help everyone in the technology space. So NASCOM has great uh, companies who have done wonderful stuff in you know leading the digital transformation. Now uh, NASCOM's idea here is how do we bring those learnings? To different sectors so this is one aspect of that where we are trying to reach out to you know e-commerce space retail space medical space trying to bring those sn uh, nascom connections in so that you can also leverage and build your you know portfolio or your technical solution so nascom is mainly uh, focused on five areas and how we do and how it's uh, helping the indian businesses one is uh, uh, you know, AI space where NASCOM is heavily involved. So if you follow, you know, NASCOM in the digital space like LinkedIn, you see that a lot of activities are promoted on AI. How do you bring AI into the company? I think that's very important, right? Unless we do it, unless we transform ourselves, we'll be out of date. Second is uh, talking about go-to-market. So there's a big initiative, which is I'm also part of, 
is how do we really help a small medium business or a medium enterprise which, who is successful in India? How do we reach out to the world? What are the ways or channels and how we can reach out to the world? That is what NASCOM is creating cohort groups, trying to take them to different countries. So I was part of a couple of uh, visits to Canada and Germany and other places. So try to really, really understand, is your product or services really up to date? Is there something that you need to do? Is there something that you need to form a relationship with another partner in you know different countries and how you can do it? Then the third aspect is really upskilling your talent. So NASCOM has a future skills program, which is very prominent program, which we are, every company is, should be part of is, how do I really upskill the people? So, for example, in e-commerce space, somebody is very good at, you know, packaging or logistics stuff. Now, how do I make him understand on how to upskill him so that he's relevant in the market? So, NASCOM is uh, working very closely with the industries across. It's not about SME or MSME. It is about bringing the skills so that, you know, we train our talent in India to the next level. Then we have events. Uh, so, there's obviously a lot of events every organization has, which is very popular events. And the last one I would say is also other things where foundation. So if you are real in MSME and you want to do uh, some collaboration on the social uh, reach out programs or uh, part of your uh, you know, social investments as part of the company, you know, NASCOM has a foundation which helps with those aspects as well. So uh, we are very actively involved. We would love to help out any company which is, wants to go into the digital transformation space. So that's, I think, the core goal of NASCOM and what we are very actively involved in. So I think that's uh, one side of the story which I was supposed to talk today, to bring NASCOM into the, you know, how we can collaborate with, uh, you know, uh, the organizations and bring to help different industries and industry verticals. So please reach out to us if you need any help in the implementation or the digitization of your company, and NASCOM will be very helpful. So then the second uh, side of the story, which I'm uh, very keen to address today is, you know, I have experience in working in startups. I have experience in starting a services company as uh, Sangeeta Ma'am has told. We are a 300 people company. We are focused very much on the German market. We do a lot of business. So there's a lot of uh, digital marketing that is involved in reaching out to our customers. Then there's a, another venture I also have uh, two years ago I started is Achala Health, very focused on healthcare products to the current healthcare industry, for example, all the hospitals. So we're working very closely with AIG and Kamineni and some of the big hospitals. So I kind of went through quite a few journeys in uh, you know, trying to understand what is digital marketing, how does it impact a company in any space, right? So I'll give you five examples today, which probably sets the tone for uh, Prashanti Madam's uh, presentation. So we all know, right, digital marketing, I think there is a theme also today saying that, hey, first let's explore what is digital marketing. Now then let's, you know, establish a policy or a team to do it. Then I, how do you expand it? Then how do you evaluate it? So there is a theme and any, it's like any other thing, right? You want to launch into a new space or a new product or services. How do you bring it to the market? And digital marketing obviously helps in, you know, taking your product into the market, your visibility is improved, you're present in the online space, and especially e-commerce and stuff, you have to be online. But in my view, that is mostly, I would say, digital marketing 1.0, right? We talked about industry 4.0. I would say digital marketing 1.0 is you have to be in the digital space. You have to somehow be present there. And once you are present there, now the question about, you know, how much budget do I do it? How do I optimize my AdWords? I have only one crore budget now. What do I do? So all those challenges come into the picture. But still, I would say that is digital marketing 1.0. Now, the real challenge comes in when, I'll give you five examples. Netflix, we are all aware of Netflix, right? We all watch the movies. So uh, the key differentiation for Netflix is when you are clicking on the remote or you're browsing through the Netflix screens, it automatically knows what your content is based on your history. So it is already pre-populating the things in front of you. And by implementing AI behind it, they are not now. It was five, six years ago or 10 years ago. They were able to increase the content viewing by four times from a similar platform. So by doing that, they're able to save at least a billion dollars by understanding how to basically engage with the customer, what the customer interests are. That is number one. 
Number two, uh, these are all U.S. companies I'm listing. I'm not listing the Indian companies. There is something called Wow uh, Voucher, Wow W O W C H E R. It's a big company. Their problem was uh, people are. I want to give vouchers to the people. Now, how do I know what vouchers to give? So what they did is based again on the history and the behind the stories, they were able to pinpoint, hey, this guy is going to vacation, so let me give the vouchers to him. So by doing that, they were able to decrease their marketing spend by 30% because they know exactly how to target, right? So again, understanding the customer is one aspect. Creating that experience with the customer is more important because you can immediately attack. Then the third company I can think of is Sephora. I'm not sure how many people know about Sephora. It is a beauty company. Their challenge was people come to their website, they have a huge brochure, and the consumer is basically spending a lot of time on those brochures, not knowing exactly what to buy and where to buy and how quickly can I get it because attention span is very less. So what they've done is they have created an intelligent AI bot on their website, which interacts with the customer asking a few questions on what are they interested in. Based on that, they take them through a journey and then make sure that, you know, some appointment is booked so that the person can visit a near, uh, near center or buy something on the website. They're, by doing that, their simple people reaching their stores has increased by 15%, right? Then the fourth one, we all know Amazon. We all know Amazon does all these recommendation engines, e-commerce, everybody should know about it, right? So by doing that, the actual, uh, there is a study done on uh, Amazon, which says that 35% of their sales happen because of recommendation engine. Now, imagine Amazon is a 400 to $500 billion company. Now, 30 to 35% is close to $100 billion, right? $100 billion business is done on the engagement with the customer, understanding what the customer wants. So my bottom line to what I'm trying to say today is, Yes, getting into digital marketing, having presence online is only first step. You can put your analytics behind it. Hey, I found my customer. I, you know, my click rate has increased. All the parameters and analysis is fine. That is needed. That is what is 1.0. But the second phase, if you don't do it, if you don't engage with your customer on a continuous basis and make sure that he is with you, your attrition will be very high. You will not be able to make the benefits. So. Please, after listening to Prashanthi's speech today, also think about AI and how AI can impact your digital marketing. It is happening. It is real. So please also spend some time thinking how, can, how does AI help your business, whether it is bought, whether it is engaging with your customer. You should be able to engage with the customer. I think that's the key message I want to pass today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajesh. I think that was very, very insightful, right? Agreed. How many are sleeping? How many are listening? <laughs> I just want to understand. Anyway, on the lighter note, that was in the lighter note. Uh, so I now request uh, uh, Mr. Nirupam Saudri, director at NASCOM. He's a digital transformation enthusiast, a community influencer. He's expert at market intelligence and MSME insights. And uh, he's also a change leader and an avid traveler. So over to Mr. Nirupam. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Angita, and good up, good morning, everyone. Uh, a, a fantastic stage is set. Uh, believe me, may my colleague, colleague uh, Raghu Amit, they are here, here as well from NASCOM. And of course, uh, we heard from uh, eminent speakers from FCCC and of course, Rajesh just speaking about why we are doing this. So I'll not spend much time because we are all waiting for actual action in terms of Prashanti and Kamal. Will They will explain uh, the journeys for you, some case studies for you coming forward. I'll just spend maybe a couple of minutes talking to you in terms of why we think this is crucial now. Um, I think uh, post-COVID, we have all seen uh, specific sectors like manufacturing, discrete or process, or certain sectors were not so much into the digital forefront. Uh, certain retail areas or certain segments like media and entertainment or, so for, for example, even traditional sectors. At that time, they all suffered quite a lot who, who didn't plan properly. 
that was crucial uh, in this room today we have uh, getting an idea from vishal and of course we got got to understand that many of you are into b2c businesses right you are actually trying to uh, reach your customers and there your customers are not only in hyderabad or the adjoining areas it's across india it's across the globe right how do you reach them better it is crucial how to how do you actually capture leads better it is it should not be just in your digital smartphone there should be a proper process so that in case as an entrepreneur if you are not available your next in line your second person third person they can the business should not stop so the basically there should be a chain of process which will make sure that your uh, your customers are able to reach you any time that's crucial these are this is one area then another another thing is many of you have your merchandise i saw the mix of the audience many of you have your uh, products which you are actually selling you are you are sending across to your customers in other parts of the globe right there are different parameters to it there is there is an idea of inventory planning how much how much of log the logistics involvement which is, which is associated with it there is a there is a definite uh, involvement of the payment gateways which are which are there where by which you receive payments and in time and in time you need to need to deliver right all these aspects have traditionally always happened if we, if we go back even 10 to 15 years back before the bigger giants in e-commerce came in they were happening they were the, the the brick and mortar companies were they were they were there but now with advent of i mean i think we heard ravi ji and also rajesh ji was talk about how basically it has become much easier to have your digital footprint and people are able to you are able to increase efficiency of your own organization that's crucial so be it your uh, you know your products or artifacts be it your services which you want to cater to your customers every step of the way it is very crucial to understand how it can be made better at many times we understand that there are of course awareness sessions from ftcc i really thank ftcc for doing this uh and various other associations who come and we are fortunate to work with many other associations as well we find that there are a lot of good awareness sessions and workshops but believe me i was just talking to the gentleman here in the morning that it is very important that we are actually doing beyond the workshops it's crucial that we need to work very closely with you hand in hand there is a lot of hand holding required for the guys who are initially joining the bandwagon it is not uh, it is very easy to say that okay these are the steps 1 2 3 4 5 2 for your digital journey but believe me when you start the process there are a lot of hiccups which comes at times it is very important these are this is your sincere recommendations when you work with state msme departments as well as central msme departments we say that please do certain things so that there is regular touch points with the msme sector so that every month there is there are some activities by which if they are stuck somewhere where they should reach that is crucial because otherwise things get stuck we have seen many instances um, i'm fortunate enough to visit many msme clusters also across it due to my role in sme sme team i've seen that in many cases there is a lot of lot of good intent but you you could have a brilliant website but unless you maintain it properly it's useless right what is the content should be in the website how how do you how frequently do you reach out to your customers that shantil prasad is going to talk about so it is that if you reach every one hour to someone in in that cycle that will not help me it will block you so there are certain best practices which need to be followed when we visit those clusters we understood that they are very keen to uh, increase their business through this route they are they want to understand the roi when they, definitely there are certain investments which are required but there is it is also very crucial to understand uh, what what are some of the do's and don'ts right uh, there are few aspect like design aspect there are very uh, there are aspects like uh, when you are actually doing your accounts also many places we say that of course there are traditional accounts which which have been maintained but there are it is a very transparent route now and there are with regulations new laws taxes taxation which is coming in it is very important that if you are actually doing e-commerce and exports there are certain laws and certain processes to be followed what are those we need to understand those so i think at every step of the way uh beyond uh, just uh, awareness sessions like this it is uh, it is our uh, uh, sincere uh, pledge to all of you not only in this room but also when you talk to your peers and your friends in the industry your uh, your your friends it is it is uh, important for us for, from our side from ftcci from assam side 
that we are there in that journey with you so that if you are stuck you should reach out to us and there are there would be consultants like prashanti kamal and others who would be helping but work more with them work closely and there is a certain uh, amount of patience which is required to adopt that system initial hiccups will be there but uh, once you start that process you will find that the efficiency increase quite a lot that's that's my two bits uh, to you uh, i sincerely look forward to the workshops throughout the day and i i wish this workshop all success thank you thank you so much mr nirupam that was uh, wonderful and thank you for offering full support for msme i'm sure a big round of applause he is there for all of you nascom is there and fpcci also is there to support all of your endeavors and uh, next time when you stuck with any strategic digital solutions you know where to head to right now i request uh, we'll have a small uh, interval sort of we i would uh, like to request uh, our vice president mr ravi kumar to offer a memento to our chief guest mr yaram raju a round of applause please Right. I'd like to request our vice president to submit uh, to offer a moment to to Mr. Rajesh Raju and Mr. Nirupam too. A more energetic applause, please. Yeah. Mr. Mohan Raidu will present a memento to Mr. Nirupam. Our Vice President is also a guru of CC Ravi Shankar, and he keeps teaching us many health points. So clapping is one of them. Not guru of CC Ravi. No, no, sorry. <laughs> He's a disciple of Guru Ravi Shankar. Sorry, sorry for that error. I would like to request the distinguished guests on the stage to take their seat. I would like to request Mr. Yaram Raju to stay back on the stage. So much, everyone. Thank you. Our keynote speaker today is Mr. Yaram Raju. His profile is extensive. He has done extensive work in the field of MSME over the last three decades. so if i have to completely talk about his work it will take another half an hour or even more so i will be reading out a very brief profile of uh, mr yaram raju uh, he is uh, a phd from andhra university he is a banker turned economist having worked with the sbi for nearly three decades he was senior faculty and dean of uh, administrative staff college of india for eight years and international man of the year for the international biographical society cambridge in 1992 He was also the chair professor of economics at the LBS National Academy, the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy, which is in Mussoorie, on deputation from the SBI for a year and a half. He is the founder director of Tamil Nadu Telangana Industrial Health uh, PLHCL. Okay, he will be talking extensively on how he has been reviving uh, MSMEs and the industrial health of uh, MSMEs. So his extensive experience he will be sharing today, and all of you all are fortunate to listen to him today. I can assure that. Thank you. Over to Mr. Yaram Raju. Good morning to all of you. Thank you, Sangeeta, for the introduction. Uh, well, I have questioned myself as to why. i should be the chief guest for this and uh, that to amidst uh, the joyance of 
software technology sitting here uh, well uh, i come from mostly a smb sector i would say uh, with my six decades of experience uh, i dream into the present where i have my five grandchildren all working in leading technology companies in the world one is into intelix as a project executive the other is in meta third is in tesla uh, fourth is uh, i don't remember the name fourth and fifth and uh, they are all in california and canada uh, so i i thought as a grandfather i have some right to at least talk in technology if not not knowing not knowing technology i talk about technology uh, well uh, i relate mostly to the msmes so my presentation will be uh, not merely talking for the slides uh, but also i will i have some slides and some questions to the audience and each question will not take more than a second you have to use your hand that's all you will count i will count the hands uh, that's the way uh, it interrupts my uh, presentation um, when we see where we are now we should feel lucky all of you agree yes. all of you agree that we, we are all lucky right and the world is full of opportunities and opportunities today unlike the year in which i was uh, you know graduated and uh, i took my phd also even in 1984 we didn't uh, see so many opportunities as i see today uh, seeing my grandchildren in those positions you know it's uh, 25 years guys uh, the digitization digitization digitalization digital transformation digital adoption you know all things have been spoken of and digital marketing as a converter of uh, uh, you know the technology into wealth right marketing does what marketing does it converts the technology into wealth and uh, we should understand the manner in which these words are being used i don't know whether i am right in talking about the funda of the uh, word what does this uh, digitization mean what this digitalization means what this digital transformation means and then how the marketing is transforming the whole thing you know that is what is the text of my talk after talking about some of the challenges that the uh, msme space whether these challenges can be converted into opportunities by the technology that we are talking of if they are not converting these challenges into opportunities then where exactly are we failing can we make them succeed i think this is where i would focus uh msm is challenges today you look at them so oh, i think mr ravi kumar spoke quite a bit about it and uh, uh you will notice what are the main challenges people think that finance is a main challenge i confirm that it is not with experience in conducting the telangana industrial health clinic limited you will wonder industrial health clinic limited when i threw the advertisement for the top executive there were five uh, anesthetists who applied and <laughs> five surgeons who applied <laughs> but thinking that it has something to do with health but they did not know that it was to do with the industrial health because where revival and restructuring mattered and uh, in that clinic what we have noticed we have revived 1100 uh, enterprises during the past 5 years and everybody who comes they come only with uh, sobs and we would like to go with cheers like them to go with cheers no. sobs will be converted into cheers at the telangana industrial health clinic limited out of 1100 only 58 required finance that to of 8 crores rupees the government gave me only 10 crores as equity and 10 crores as grant so what we have done we have been counseling them mentoring them coaching them 
when they should adopt technology, which market they should attract, which products they should change, which processes they should adopt, you know, how they should change their supply chains. All these things we were able to talk to them. More than that, we were able to talk to their families. Because most entrepreneurs in MSME sector don't have the habit of sharing even with families, leave alone sharing with the society. They are, they are tired of sharing their grievances with even the family members. They think that if they share, you know, they, the wife will think otherwise, the son will think otherwise. So why should I share? They don't share. So what we do in due diligence, did in due diligence was to reach the families with the concurrence of the entrepreneur. We used to tell him, okay, you have done well or bad, but can we talk to your wife? Can we talk to your daughter? Or can we talk to your partners? And he'll say, oh, no problem. He didn't know what was in him, in for him. <laughs> and why I'm mentioning this is, so many of the problems that the MSMEs face are ne not necessarily in finance. They end up in the silo, silo of finance. But he can be they can be resolved by looking at differently the entire uh, ball game. And there is a clarion call for digitization of these MSMEs. As though the marketing problems, technology problems, everything can be resolved by digitalization. Digitalization is a big mantra that will change the entire, uh, you know, uh, ball game of, uh, you know, today you find uh, in the ET an article by Meti that uh, digitalization is the game changer. And yes, it is a game changer, provided we know how to play the game. We know how to, you know, uh, if you are uh, thinking of playing football, you know, when to really uh, kick the ball. <laughs> You know, you, you have a variety of things that will come in the way when you are thinking of digitization. So what does this digitization mean? <clears throat> will digital adoption resolve the issues and challenges of the MSMEs that we spoke of a little while ago? Please change. Everybody agrees that it will not. But then. What does this decision mean? All of your experts in it. I would say it because I I go mostly by the literature and speaking to friends like you. Whatever I speak here is not uh, born out of my hat. Digitization is the transformation from analog to digital or digital representation of a physical item with the goal to digitize and automate process and workflows. Every word has a meaning here in this entire sentence. And for starters, digitization is creating a digital bits and bytes. Version of analog. What is analog? Can somebody tell? What is analog? Technology. That is, you are converting something into some images. Whatever that is there, you can see similarities that you are creating. It is not going to be identical to your thought process. Never. The only similarity that will occur, analog will be converted into a digital product. This is what I learned from Collins Dictionary. And at Cisco, they seem to refer to digitization as the connection of people, processes, data, and things to provide intelligence and actionable insights, enabling business outcomes. Enabling business outcomes. Business is at the core, right? You must be knowing uh, those who are in the digital world, I wouldn't say those who are in the MSME world, they don't know a bit. But digital world people know, start and lie, right? And 
In an interview on leadership, digital transformation, and disruption on iScoop site, he has told, transformation and disruption have something very interesting and similar. They are both human issues, both human problems to be tackled, and not the technology problem. So here, what is the focus? The focus is on people, processes, and data and images. So where we are really to move, but back to digitalization, digitalization and digital transformation. In business, digitalization must often refer to enabling, improving, and or transforming business operations or business functions or business models processes and activities you can see in this slide and that slide is not mine i gave the reference from where i drew this slide because there there are a couple of slides which i have drawn from gartner which i have drawn from uh, mit drawn from capgemini because they have explained very well the entire process of digitalization i thought why reinvent the wheel Adopt them because the copyright is with them, not with me. I wrote to them. They said yes. If we are going for an academic session, we can use them. So I got the permission to use these slides. And digital transformation is broader than digitalization, requiring far more bridges of understanding to be built, and it is a strategy. Digitalization is a strategy. It is not just, you know, converting something into a product or a process. First of all, what does the MSME think of? And how he would like to move forward? Does it have a view of moving forward to where? In how, how much distance of time? In what uh, manner it would like to go and catch the market? All these things have to be thought of by the MSME, micro, small, medium enterprise. Micro, I will tell you why it is just not possible. Small, it is possible to an extent. Medium, it is fully possible. Whoever is speaking here about the digitalization, they are speaking about medium enterprise and to a degree about small enterprises. Certainly not about micro and small. They won't have touched with a pair of tongs because we just cannot tell. I'll tell you why. I will describe in the context of MSMEs, converting all your business documents into a retrievable but secured storage space and adoption of enterprise resource planning and performance, that is ERP solutions, my friend Vijay is here, who traveled with me on the day one uh, of starting the TAHCL. Uh, that improve your supply chains and move you to compliance of regulations and timely delivery of products and processes. Capgemini and MIT developed a model of digital transformation towards the end of 2013. That means 11 years back. Mind you, every part of this slide applies to the last syllable today. Though it was developed 11 years back. Look at that because customer experience, the operational process, and the business model development. All these things happen. Why? Because he wants to transfer something into wealth. Finally, it is the bottom line that matters for the enterprise. Are we creating that bottom line for the enterprise by introducing digitalization? And what time it will take for the enterprise to reach that space, to reach that green line? How much time this fellow will take? And what is the governance that this fellow is going to have? Because I'm talking of now medium enterprises and small who are private limited companies. Now, where governance matters, 
CESG is extremely important today. Environment, social governance, all these three components are extremely important today. Particularly when we are talking of climatology, changes in climate, and uh, the disasters the climate uh, changes are bringing about, how to readjust himself, how to readjust his people working in the enterprise to all this environment. That means there should be an effective communication in the organization. Today, how many people are communicating with all their employees in the organization in what manner? It is what that matters today. How many people are communicating with all their staff members? At least during the week, have they touched the best staff members? I am talking of small enterprises and medium enterprises. And where exactly they are moving in terms of you know, their goals? And have they shared their vision? Here, I will uh, stop and ask you certain questions. I would like you to reply by lifting your hands. How many of you are in the investment range of 1 crore to 5 crores? None. How many of you are in the turnover range of 5 crores to 50 crores? 1, 2, 3. Right. I will note on the answer. How many of you are in the turnover range of 50 crores to 250 crores? 2, 3, 4, 4 people. How many of you have spent 10 lakhs on software? 1, 2, 3. And 10 to 50 lakhs? More than 50 lakhs? One. That is for customized software, right? Or only software? Right. Okay. How many of you are operating on market software like the tally? Oh, good number. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, five. How many of you are operating on ERP solutions? One, two, three. Only three. This is your market, Vijay. Three. Yeah. Uh, they, they come in the way of my seeing the paper, so I keep it like this. No problem. I think I, I am, am I audible to the last person? Yes. Right. Okay. How much you are spending on such software if you are introducing ERP? Give, give one figure, no problem. How much? 100 lakhs? 200 lakhs? 25 lakhs. Ah. What is the life of your software as promised by the vendor? <laughs> Six months. Six months. Your recurring expenses come later. Do you operate on cloud or internal storage system? How many are operating on cloud? One, two, three, four, five. Internal storage system? One, two. Three. How many of you have a roadmap for growth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. How many of you are operating in export markets? One, two, three, four, five. How many of you have faced cyber attacks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, good. So the highest number has come for cyber attacks. 
Sí. The cost of investment in software technology is not one time. It's a recurring expenditure. Whether it is hardware or software, right? For hardware and software, the sums are not small. Nobody has told below 10 lakhs, below 50 lakhs, nobody has told only above 50 lakhs. Where is this money going to come? For an investor who is investing, say about 10 crores in a small enterprise. What is the definition of small enterprise? Investment is 10 crores. Turnover, 50 crores. See, there are issues in definition, issues in size, issues in comprehension when you look at the small and medium enterprise. But the ratio between investment and turnover is kept at 1 is to 5 by the government. You see the fun of it. There can be only 5 crore investment where you can turnover can be even 200 crores. I have seen those enterprises. There are enterprises who have invested 50 crores, but they are not able to get the turnover of even 200 crores. Legitimately. Not because he lacked ex expertise in doing that. He was trying to get the highest turnover, but he was not able to get more than 200 crores. Though he had invested 50 crores. So, the ratio itself is defective. That means there is a defect in the definition itself. Still, the MSMEs have to survive and don't check out the growth. How many of them think of scaling up? If you look at micro to small, where do you think of scaling up? Because they don't have that bandwidth to scale up. Then you have the other person. How much time I have? Am I running out of time? And the five minutes? Yeah. Okay. So you have costs that come into the way. And who is meeting the cost? Bankers? Certainly not. Don't trust a banker for meeting your technology cost. You are finished. If you take the loan for technology cost, remember within two years you will become an employee. And they will throw you out. Right? So you must know how to really fund your technology. What are the means of funding your technology? Which means that you should have an equity partner. It can be angel capital, it can be venture capital, it can come from somewhere, but there must be somebody who is willing to stay with you in technology for some time, investing with you. Right? This is number one. Second thing that you should think of is every five years it changes. Minimum. Right? Every three or five years it changes. Not even five years. You know, I know. I, I know of an entrepreneur who started in the beginning, I am talking of 90s, uh, when floppy disks were there. He started the enterprise thinking that floppy disk market is very high and then hot. Within two years, circular disks have come. Then he has finished, he is gone. He has gone into bankruptcy. Then he shifted to circular disks manufacture. Then small circular disks have come. Somebody brought from Malaysia a few small circular disks and features CDs. And this, this fellow's market is gone again. He lived for only four years. Then he had to sell away his property and he has gone. And then you have, like this, you put Recall the technologies that are coming forward, almost no technology is going to last for more than 2-3 years, right? That means for every 2-3 years, you have to keep investing. Where from such investment come? Unless you build up to your revenues, the equity for your change in technology, it will not be possible for you to stay in your company to stay and survive and grow as a company, which means that you must have a strategy to change technology, to grow with technology, and 
to transfer this technology into a marketable product and which means that data is going to be your selling point. Ultimately, it comes down to data as your sales point, right? With this, see, unless the enterprise reaches a turnover of 100 crores minimum, he can't really think of all these ramifications of change, which means that right from day one, he should have a vision, he should have a goal, he should have a strategy, he should have change management in the mind, he should be prepared for change every time. And then go ahead with the whole thing. Investment for these MSMEs comes 99% from debt. And counseling and mentoring play a very critical role, crucial role. These should come at a very low cost to them. Mind you, if they are costly, he cannot afford. If he goes to a chapter content, he is finished on the third day. He will show a spreadsheet uh, visible to the banker and the banker lends him money on the basis of spreadsheet, and this fellow is gone. I have built a small model of, for the small and medium enterprise, and which talks of right from the day he invests the money to the day he again becomes bad, and you know he would like to revive and uh, restructure himself. The entire cycle. Because, mind you, no small enterprise will have a very long life. He will have short life, but he will have to rejuvenate himself. And how he rejuvenates is what matters. These are some of the benefits and uh, these are the challenges. You know, what is required now is government must amend the industrial policy for the benefit of the MSME clients. And interest and willingness of the GST authorities to partner and then transparent regulation. Many people do not know regulations. Most of the enterprises struggle to conform to regulations. That's why they get into problems. They have to get into the notion they should know product regulation, process regulation, financial regulation. They should know the ecosystem, what it demands from him. And when he knows all these things, he will be a successful entity. And in the entire journey, any of these regulations, there will be some slip or, slip or other. Can you assure me that you are confirmed to all the regulations? Those who have become successful industry here? 100%? Anybody can assure? I am sure. I will not be able to find even one hand lifting, yes, I have followed 100% regulations, right? And today, if you read Economic Times, you will notice that uh, <coughs> the, uh, some of the technology products prospect, I would see Sahai, Praman, Manthan, Abhyasa, Samvad, Sensor Trackers, Sectoral Credit Assessment Tools, and then you will find most of these enterprises today in the MSME sector suffer from a very uh, genetic problem. They suffer from a very genetic problem. Can you tell me that? Hmm? Language? No. Language is not the problem. Because today, even language translation tools are there. If we tell the AI, it will tell what language you want. That's not a problem for him. His problem is sharing. He thinks that he's an innovator. And if he shares, that's the problem with many startups. You know, 50% of the startups fail in this country. The <coughs> reason is they are not able to share. If you share the problem, half the problem can be solved. Many people don't share the problem. The buzzword today is artificial intelligence. And my friends have spoken about artificial intelligence while they were speaking today. It has many uses, but calibrate them and ensure no attrition. That means no staff members should leave by introducing AI. After all, what happened? 
the person who invented ai has lost his job first person to lose his job is the person who invented ai and psychometric analysis helps better due diligence of your clients you know how to your creators behave how your debtors behave all this is possible with ai <coughs> so you should know how to use your ai with effectiveness this slide will give you uh, <coughs> some inkling into that <coughs> ai no doubt helps in psychometric analysis effective due diligence of your debtors and creditors and make your business profitable remember it is people who make the organization and not the technologies technology should be your servant and not the master like what you find in banks today you will find go into the counter ask for a question he will say my system does not respond he will not give you an answer for your problem and you should be the first salesman of technology you would like to introduce for business development or for reaching distant markets innovate innovate and innovate is the mantra for successful business and digital adoption and digital adoption has to be strategic and timely apart from being cost effective thank you for giving this opportunity to me above this one thank you very much that was very insightful isn't it what an absorbing uh, way of you know describing all the various problems and strategies to tackle uh, the msme digital adoption mechanisms and uh, one of the key things that i found very interesting was uh, you know talking to the families and seeking their support to which normally in a business and the race for business and excellence you kind of you know normally miss out on that but uh, dr yaram raju has uh, thrown light on a 360 degrees perspective i would like to uh, congratulate uh, mr mohan raidu for you know curating this program with such stellar speakers and enhancing the knowledge of all the msmes and i would like to request uh, ms prashanti koloru uh, our next speaker for the day i would like to have a short introduction of her she is the founder and ceo of cloud portal experienced founder in marketing and advertising with ex uh, expertise in saas product development and marketing author of are you the next ceo skilled in technology and market analysis defining target audiences through psychographics and demographics designs effective marketing strategies for saas products and e-commerce platforms he also specializes in b2b marketing and market positioning working closely with sales teams to identify target audiences and decision makers A hearty welcome, Ms. Prashanti Kolluru. Thank you for joining us today. On this note, I, do, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Manish Gupta, member ICT committee, who has joined us despite his hectic schedule. Welcome, Ms. Prashanti. Over to listening to you. Over the audience is waiting to listening to you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh... a quick question before i start uh, how many of you are uh, not from hyderabad some nearby regions like medak or uh, sangareddy or as most of you uh, most of you are from hyderabad uh, how many of you are uh, not from hyderabad can you please raise your hands okay i see one person and um, i have you uh, all the others are from hyderabad thank you so much for joining joining me today uh, i would like to take this opportunity to thank nascom team and uh, cpci for giving me this opportunity to share my experience with all of you so uh, just to um, give you a little bit of uh, brief about me i am uh, prashanti koluru founder and ceo of cloud portals i have 14 plus years of experience in the industry Uh, i am a member of forbes agency council as well uh, certified in marketing by indian institute of uh, indian school of business hyderabad i am um, awarded uh, like last year we uh, were awarded by fcci for uh, excellence in marketing innovation um, 
We I am also an author of the book. Are you the next CEO? I have just put in the QR code there just in case you want to purchase. We can place an order with Amazon. I am a BNI member. I am currently a member of NASCOM and FTCCI CEO for it. And I am an ITF player. I play tennis every day. So I have a, a, a world ranking of 583 right now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, as uh, said, as the stage was set by Ravi Kumar sir and uh, Rajesh Karu and everyone, thank you so much for setting the stage today. I would quickly take you through, uh, uh, you know, uh, at at a very high level, I'll explain you about the different aspects of uh, digital presence, as rightly said by Raj Rajesh Karu. Having your presence online is the is just the first step of your business, taking your business to the digital world. Um, so I'll just take you through what are uh, the steps that you need to take when it comes to building your web presence and then how to market your business you know, through digital marketing strategies. And then we go a little bit deeper into advertising aspects. And then a frequently asked questions is what I've come up with few questions because uh, with the experience that I have working with multiple you know, non-tech SMEs, I have few questions that uh, I can answer and then uh, we can take uh, questions if, we, if the time permits. And then if the time does not permit, I'm always available offline. Please do reach out to me. So what is web and online presence? Uh, just in simple terms, right? Like if somebody is searching for your business and they find you on internet, right? That is a web presence. Like it could be a website, having your own uh, website. Uh, having the social media accounts, like when you when somebody is searching for your business and they find you with your social media accounts, that is also an online presence. Okay, having your Google, Google My Business page, uh, having your business listed on websites like India Mart, Just Dial. How many of you have your web uh, presence on uh, India Mart here? Okay, fantastic. Quite quite uh, many. So and you are also found on Just Dial. Okay, fantastic. And Sulekha.com? Yeah, that's great. So that is a web presence, okay, where there is a page existing which shows what your product, services, and solutions are. But honestly, that's not enough. I'll take you through why. So many business owners, like especially in the small and medium segment, have come to me and said, Madam, we have built our business for 20 years now, and really we don't understand what is technology, what is a website. It's really confusing for us. There is a web developer who comes, I'll build in WordPress. Then there is another web, uh, web developer who comes, I'll build in Shopify. I'll build on uh, Joomla, Drupal. You know, you must have heard of all these things. But I just want you, uh, want to take you through a relation between a physical web business, how you start, and how you can relate it to website, right? So just a small comparison chart. Like say, if you if you are starting your business, first thing you would do is by identify a unique business name. In digital terms, it is just your web domain name. That's all. There's no difference. Okay. So once you have identified your business name, what would say? What would be the next step? You would go and register yourself with the Ministry of Company Affairs, right? In the same way, you go to a web registry like GoDaddy or Namecheap and you buy this domain. You buy the name of the website. When you, when, uh, when you go to the MCA, they ask you whether you want an LLP, whether you want to set it up as a private limited company or a, you know, as a partnership firm. In the similar way, you can, there is something called country code top level domain, which is like dot in, dot com, dot co, dot uk, dot uh, you know, .co.au. So this is a country-specific domain extension, which is called CCTLD. So that is how you classify whether you are an Indian uh, website, you want a global website. So what we would suggest is, if your business is catering to global audience, then prefer to take a .com domain. Now, if your business is something related to AI, then prefer to take something with .ai extension. Now, if your business is you know, catering to local audience, you know, inside Telangana, inside India, then prefer to take something in dot in domain. That will uh, you know, give you a recognition for your uh, business. Now, sorry. 
the next aspect is once you have registered your business, what would be the next step? You go and lease out a space to put your product, services, or solutions, right? In physical uh, world, that is what you do. In the same way, on digital world, you buy a hosting server. You buy a hosting server, and then you then get a web developer to design. Like how you get a interior designer to design your store, like that you get a web developer to design your website. Now, once the website is designed, what is the next step? Once an interior, you know, your store is ready, it's interior design, you have launched your store, the first thing you will do is lock your store. That is what you do with SSL certificates. So it is very important to have a SSL certificate on your website. Now, how do you identify whether a website is having a SSL or not? Is when you see the HTTPS, S is for secure. If there is no HTTP, and there's only HTTP, that is the website is not secure and Google throws an error when you try to access that. Right, so, yeah, that's where we um, relate a physical business to digital business. It is not very difficult, like, you know, um, you can easily relate to each other. Now, what is traditional marketing? Like once you have launched your business, now you want everyone in your uh, world, everyone in your network, for them to know what you are doing, right? So how many of you, like how many, how many of us actually will go and tell, I uh, know, 10 people, maximum 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, right? But we cannot reach thousands of people just by word of mouth. It is not possible. That is where there is a concept called digital marketing that has evolved. So I will take you through that, but just to compare with physical and digital. So once you have launched a physical store, what you would do, you go and put a hoarding, a bus shelter or a cinema theater advertising or you put up a TV advertisement or newspaper ad, this is what traditional advertisement or marketing you do, where you are spreading your word about your business through different means. Now, how do you do it in digital way? Right? So what is digital marketing? The five main important aspects of digital marketing are search engine optimization, SEO, social media marketing, social media, uh, SMM, Digital advertising like Google ads, PPC ads, you know, Meta ads, Insta ads, LinkedIn ads. So there are a lot of advertising aspects that you can take care of. Then there is content marketing, there is email marketing. Now you must have also heard about WhatsApp marketing. You no know, different types of marketing that have evolved in the last few years. Now what is search engine optimization? How many of you are confused about search engine optimization here? Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. So, yes, so many people are often confused about uh, what is SEO. We don't understand. So, let me take you through the evolution of SEO. Why did, how, did, how did it arise? So, a little bit, uh, if we just go back into the history where, you know, in the year 1990 was the first search engine which, is called, uh, which was called Architects that evolved. So when it comes to web, just imagine it as a digital uh, a library, you know, a physical library. Imagine that it is a physical library. If there are 10 books in a library, how much time would it take for you to just search for one book? Less than few seconds, maximum a few minutes, right? Now there are 1,000 books on the website. Uh, sorry, 1,000 books in the library. How much time would it take for you to search for one book? It will take a few hours, right? Now... Um, imagine there are 10,000 books, right? It may take a few days, right? That is where the concept of architects came in, where they built the first search engine, where somebody typed a text, that is where it used to go and search all the files and bring up the relevant uh, results. That is what was built in 1990. In 1991, they came up with a, um, you know, uh, the first uh, website was built. So initially it was, the digital concept was all uh, dumb. Then they started with a website that was built in 1991. In 1993, they launched the first web browser that was Mosaic. Today there are different web browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera is the latest one. So there are different uh, website, uh, web browsers, but initial first web browser was Mosaic that was built in 1993. In 1993, the RC text, actually it was used to only search for text then. It actually transformed into Excite, which was a search engine. 
1994, that is where Alta Vista, Yahoo, and all were set up. 1997, that was the youngest search engine that came up was Google. September 15th, 1997, World Engineers Day, that is where Google was set up. And in, to, in the year 2000, that is where Google launched the concept called Web Crawler and Page Ranking Algorithm. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, the top five search engines today are Google, followed by Baidu, followed by Yahoo, Microsoft, and Yandex. Can you tell me which country is uh, Baidu from? Anyone? China, yes. Thank you. And uh, Yandex is from Russia. And Microsoft uh, search engine is Bing. I'm sure many of you know it, right? So the, the user base, if you see most of the users use Google as one of the search engines, topmost search engines. That is why many customers or many users try to use Google as the first search engine because that is very much optimized and gives the results very appropriately. Now, what is search engine optimization? So basically, when uh, you talk to a digital marketer, they will tell you that for search engine optimization, you have to do this, that. You, know, you have to rank the uh, website. You have to put your website in the first page of Google search results and all. But how is it done? There are two concepts of search engine optimization. One is technical issue, which is more to do with your website, the structure of your website, the way your website is built, the way your website is designed, as Nirupam has mentioned, what is the content that needs to go onto the website. All these aspects are dealt with on the technical SEO part. When it comes to off-page SEO, it is more of other company, other websites referring to your website. So um, just a, a quick um, understanding, like, uh, like we have a lot of role models on the, um, uh, in the real world, right? Like Chiranjeevi or Amitabh Bachchan. We consider them as authority in one particular field, right? Dr. Abdul Kalam Azhar. Like he was uh, authority in the science, field of science, right? So uh, why do we consider them as authority? Because many people look up to them for a particular area of their specialization. In the same way, the main authority is one aspect which you may have to closely look at when you are doing the SEO, SEO part. In search engine optimization, domain authority plays a very significant role in ranking your websites on the top uh, top 10 search results page. That is where uh, technical SEO, that is both on-page and off-page, they play a very significant role in uh, ranking your websites on the search engine. Now, what is crawling, indexing, and uh, ranking? Basically, when you build a website, Google needs to know what uh, Google or search engine needs to know what is this website all about. That is why the, there is a bot which actually physically crawls, I mean, uh, digitally crawls your website. And uh, once the website is crawled, it will actually analyze the page content and then index it into, this, um, into, your, uh, into the database. Imagine database like an Excel sheet. Okay, so there is a business, uh, business uh, there is a bot that comes to the website and it crawls, it finds there are few keywords and says that, okay, this particular company is more into construction. So it will put the website name and map it to a word, keyword called construction. Now somebody is searching for the best construction company in Hyderabad, then this particular website must pop up in the search results. That is the intent of crawling, indexing, and ranking. So as a user, when user comes to the website, he actually puts a keyword in the search term, in the search box, where the, uh, the user actually is navigated in the backend to the database, which is an Excel sheet, where the search happens and the result is come, uh, you know, result is displayed, which is, which is where users see. That is where your ranking concept comes in. Now, uh, many of you like um, have uh, told me here that you are confused about uh, SEO, but and then you hire a digital marketer to do your SEO, uh, SEO uh, work. Then how do you measure whether your SEO is really working or not? You know, you should always know whether uh, the, uh, the money that you are paying, whether it is uh, really giving the result or not. Right? So what are the parameters that you should actually look for? The first is improvement in your domain authority. 
domain authority is always scored at a point of 100 so if your domain authority is at 9 out of 100 then you should always look at increasing your domain authority towards 100 like uh, the latest uh, we saw was facebook facebook had a domain authority of 99 then uh, very um, uh, there was another website um, which was uh, top ranking like hubspot or something i think hubspot we recently uh, did a research they were at 94 okay so that is how your domain authority should have a rank a rating which is higher which is towards 100 then you should also able you should be able to see an increase in your website traffic at least in the first two three months when you start your seo you should be able to see an improvement in the traffic that is coming to your website an increase in the number of backlinks that is where your off page seo whether it is working or not you will know that in this backlinks you can see it in the google search terms increase in the number of referring domains an increase in the click through rate like how many people are actually coming to the search result and clicking on your website are they really finding your website in the search page and whether they are clicking let us click through rate and the bounce rate on the website should always come down so if a person visits your website and then closes the browser in 30 seconds in less than 30 seconds that is called a bounce that is the customer when you landed on your website he did not find a relevant content on the website he closed the browser he closed the tab okay that is where your bounce rate is set so always make sure your bounce rate is at a lower stage it is it should be less than 20 percent the visibility of keywords on the google search results page a search console that is where your web developer your seo expert can show you what are the keywords that are visible for your business Next, uh, what is social media? Social media is a very new concept that came up in the last maybe 15 years now. Um, so when Facebook was uh, uh, no, launched, how many of you created your accounts in 2009? Yeah, quite a new, <laughs> quite a few. Very nice. Thank you so much. So what happened was Facebook initially launched itself as a social networking platform. Okay, we can reach one level, two level, and third level of our friends. That was the intent in which Facebook launched. But as uh, Facebook progressed, right, I'm just taking an example of Facebook. This is the case with every other social media as well. So as Facebook uh, you know, progressed, it realized that there are a lot of customers showing a different type of interest. There is an age that is associated with an account. Then there are interests, like I like... Say, I like a cooking uh, video, then I like a, um, uh, um, say, a gaming video, right? So what I do, I click likes. So that is where it is recorded in the database of the Facebook. And Facebook knows, that, okay, this person, like Prashanti Koduru, likes cooking and likes gaming gifts, right? So it now started advertising concept where it invited the cooking people saying that you can show your videos to people who like cooking and you have to pay for it. That is where the advertising concept of uh, social media has come in. Uh, but I'll show you the uh, different uh, types of uh, marketing in uh, social media as well. So these are different uh, social media channels. Always remember, you don't have to be there on every social media. If it is not relevant, please avoid it. You don't have to be on every social media, especially when I'm talking about business. Not every business needs to be on all the accounts of social media. Not required. Uh, it, it very much depends on what kind of businesses you are in. I'll also take you through a case study, an interesting one, which uh, we did it for one of our customers. So again, when it comes to social media marketing, there are two types of social media marketing. One is organic and the other one is inorganic. How many of you know what is an organic social media marketing? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we are a digital, we are digital marketers, right? So, <laughs> so basically, organic social media marketing is nothing but you as a user creating an account or a page and posting every single day. That is organic. Where you are just using the social media, creating uh, uh, specific content for your audience and posting every single day. Now, uh, 
what is inorganic and when you, you when you are actually posting this and you try to boost this post you know push this post to multiple people through advertising or through by you know investing some money on advertising platforms that is called inorganic so in um, yeah so that is a, a concept of say uh, social media marketing both organic and inorganic so i have also listed down the roles that you need to look for when you are actually looking for social media marketing so for a social media marketing activity you will need a social media marketer a graphic designer and a content writer to create the content to create the caption content to create the post content if it is a video you want uh, the help of a graphic designer to create a video like if it is inorganic marketing again you need a, uh, a digital marketing lead a social media marketer and graphic designer and a performance marketer as well to make sure that your post reaches to multiple people through advertising platform now what are the measuring parameters you should look for when it comes to social media marketing right so when you engaged with a digital marketer and you told them that or they told you that the strategy the strategy for your business is go go into social media marketing okay so you said okay you do the social media marketing i'll see how the results are working whether i am getting leads or not now at the end of the day you should know what is what are the parameters in which you should measure when it comes to the performance of the social media marketer right so the first one is you should be able to see the increase in the number of followers right so the number of followers on instagram facebook linkedin so you can measure it you can see the analytics you can go behind and uh, increase in the number of impressions so impre how many of you understand what is an impression okay great two people okay fantastic so impression is nothing but when you are scrolling on instagram and there is a post that appears in front of you you did not click on it you did not watch it but it appears on your uh, you know feed that is impression but if you click on it or view it for some time that is called engagement right so you click on it you like it or you share it with other people you repost it on other groups that is where your engagement comes in so you should be able to see increase in the impressions improvement in the engagement increase in the number of views if it is a video and then increase in the number of in the referral traffic from social media now where you will see this referral traffic on social media is in google analytics you will be able to see this measure in google analytics uh, platform now what is uh, digital advertising so digital advertising is again divided into three parts when one is uh, google ads which most of us have heard of then we have meta ads and then we have other social media advertising uh, platforms running search engine ads uh, like on google like using the keywords you know identifying the keywords assuming that these are the keywords through which my they are, you know customers should be searching for me that is where you run the google ad campaigns um meta ads you identify the you know the, the customer pockets in the social media and then target them through advertising meta ads or you know meta uh, business suite that is where your uh, meta ads play a major role and then other social media ad platforms like every social media platform as i told you has an advertising concept where uh, they cater to certain uh, set of audience like uh, linkedin ads you know if they, if you are into b2b especially it then linkedin is your go to platform make sure that you are present on linkedin every single day keep posting keep uh, you know keep your keep your audience engaged with on linkedin now twitter ads pinterest ads snap uh, snapchat ads these are few of the platforms that are available on social media for advertising every platform offers uh, objective based advertising like if i want to increase the brand awareness i can choose that objective and then i can run my ad campaign so it will actually amplify your reach uh, making sure that you are achieving that objective like uh, these objectives can include brand awareness building brand awareness or uh, you know more website visits you can uh, if you are having an e-commerce store maybe you can offer shop now kind of a thing 
again to run an advertising campaign you will need a digital marketing lead a graphic designer a performance marketing manager so this is these are the typical roles you may want to look for when you are looking for google advertising campaigns or any other employer social media advertising campaigns or yeah so many of us are confused how to define how how i should check whether my ad is appearing or not so if you see as if you are typing your website name or the keyword that you use to run the ad always use incognito window if you are running an ad for your company okay more try to put your vpn also if possible um so if you see the sponsored text on the top that is an advertising advertisement okay and the first two that you see are local search ad campaign okay and uh, beneath that whatever you see are organic campaigns so i tried searching for this keyword which is like uh, best jewelry store near me and that is where uh, these ad campaigns have come up which are uh, like local search ad campaigns where they are running ad kirti lal is running an ad starla is running an ad and then the others other companies that have come down they are more of organic search results in the similar way if you see uh, on the right side uh, that is where your ad campaigns are which are you know search based ads i tried searching for them on google and that is what i found which are sponsored and then which are not sponsored okay these are few of the display ad campaigns that you can see where you can see the product and then you can buy it you can also uh see the price of the product and then see the quality you can click on it it will go to their website and that's how it works and the meta ads this is what you see where you you can run the ads for different objectives like i said one is brand awareness lead generation app install then you see a lead generation campaign again and views or you know video ad campaigns or impressions right now uh, the do's and don'ts of uh, digital marketing let us go through the do's, do's in detail so you have to always identify your specific target audience the best uh, this best strategy or the first point for you is to identify the target audience so recently i came across one um, one enquiry which said uh, ma'am we are building this uh, software and then this software is helpful for everyone you know if you are selling to anyone and everyone that means it is for no one okay <laughs> so you should always have a specific target audience okay so for example if i have an educational institution say i have a preschool who do you think are my target audience are the kids my target audience or are the parents my target audience obviously the parents because they are the decision makers not the kids kids don't know what uh, what they want to study but the parents are the decision makers so i should actually target through my campaigns those audience who are actually going to make a decision the next one is engage with your audience like you reach them through digital media social media email marketing do is social media marketing and reach your target audience and engage with them and i say invest in seo i'm not telling it is a spend because in seo is a very uh, deep concept and it takes lot of time to build a result and it is not it doesn't happen in a day it doesn't happen in a month it is a long time process and to see an roi it takes it for some businesses competitive businesses it takes at least 2 years to see the results in search engine optimization so always invest in seo do competitor analysis before you when you start marketing identify your competitors who are they targeting okay and make sure that you target the, the concerned audience and make sure you are making you are making yourself more visible use benchmarking to measure your performance this concept of benchmarking is quite tricky you know i uh, say i started my business in 2014 i am into digital marketing today now i can't compare myself with a company which started in 2000 because the company that started in 2000 was way ahead 14 years before me so benchmarking is something that you target you put yourself in the shoe where you, the other business has also had similar market conditions 
you know similar growth conditions and wh- why they are ahead why we are not measure yourself what is the mistake we are doing right so these are few benchmarking techniques you need to look at and uh, before even you start marketing do this homework use content marketing extensively especially for b2 b businesses how many are into b2b here business selling to another business okay thank you so much so uh, when it comes to b2b the sales cycles are too long you understand that right it takes at least 6 months sometimes it's more than one year maybe it, it took one one year more than one year for us to close one business so uh, content marketing is very important where you write blogs articles case studies newsletters share with your prospects see what they are talking about see and understand how what they are actually looking for you know knock it off there where they are looking for where there is a problem go and talk to them show, show them the solution through content marketing then we have email uh, marketing use email marketing uh, use whatsapp marketing on a need basis if you have a database of list of members of your prospects i would encourage you to go and do whatsapp marketing that's a really good strategy uh, run advertising campaigns whatsapp integration on your website so typically many business owners they have a problem with integrating their whatsapp on their website because they think a oh, lot of people are going to comment spam but ideally when you look at the positive side people uh, with whatsapp integration has seen more leads coming in and the closures happening happening very quickly because they directly send a message on the whatsapp number which is integrated with your sales sdr for example and your sales rep is always in the hunt of lead now they don't have to hunt for a lead the lead is coming to them through whatsapp right so having an integration of whatsapp on your website is a real valid uh, advantage nobody wants to submit a form wait for the next day for another email to come they want instant answers so wh- having whatsapp integration on the website is one good thing that we have observed in our business which works out really well the don't right so don't start your marketing with advertising please lot of digital marketing marketers come and say okay madam we'll run the digital marketing ads for you and from tomorrow you will get the lead list of leads falling into your uh, you know um, your email or your whatsapp lot of people will come and contact you let us do uh, uh, google ads please don't start there please don't fall for that trap because you you know we all have to think like humans and our customer is also a human today you see an ad and you just go to their facebook page and see there are no followers would you even go and um, be interested to buy something definitely not we will not buy because we are all humans same thing our customers will also think like that now if our you know if our um, yeah, social media has considerable number of followers like for example 2000 followers and i have an in- social media account where i am selling my product on social media through e-commerce you know in social media also you can build a shop you can have a facebook shop there so if i am doing that and i don't have any followers people will not buy my product so ideally you should have certain number of followers before running an ad campaign so please don't fall that uh, fall for the trap of start with ad- advertising don't do that uh, ads may not work if you don't have sufficient uh, followers or seo setup also if you are you know if you are running a google advertising campaign and your landing page does not load now will the customer still, still wait saying oh they said i have clicked papa money is getting debited there so i have to still wait nobody is going to wait like that so make sure that your seo is perfect on your website and then you go for a digital ad like a google ad or facebook ad do it but but make sure that the ground rules are followed don't neglect your tar- target audience and running the ad campaign no don't skip the analytics analytics will give you a very brief picture a very good picture about who is coming to your website how much time they are spending on your website you know where they have gone out of your website all these things so you should actually put some time for yourself to analyze the analytics of your uh, business don't rely on one advertising campaign now if you have you know the base setup everything is done and you are running only one ad campaign it won't work you need to have multiple ad campaigns for multiple audiences right so like for example the uh, for the school right so you can run ad campaign one for moms one for dads you no know, two different ad campaigns 
and um, make sure that you, if you are attracting teachers right for for your school run one ad campaign separately only for teachers right recruitment process so don't forget to optimize your website for mobile users so that is very important now mobile has become the the only go to right nobody is going to open a laptop at 11 o'clock in the night and check your website the only thing they will do is they'll click on a link and open your website on the the nearest device that is a mobile phone so please make sure that your website is mobile friendly which is called responsiveness mobile link tablet friendly again uh, when it comes to marketing i honestly request all of you to please be patient with the results because results don't come in a day okay today that uh, i ran an ad campaign tomorrow the leads are not going to fall that is for sure okay you need to be patient with your ad campaigns with your marketing campaigns be it organic or inorganic right uh, results don't come quickly don't spam or overshare your organic posts don't uh, you know don't make people hate you by oversharing right so there is certain decorum that is why facebook has restricted us with uh, sharing a post in not more than five groups we cannot share in a post in uh, more than five groups in a day don't copy the content there is uh, there are few companies who come to us non tech smes who come to us and say madam we want to build a website in one week just copy whatever is there in google and just put it no what is there no it is copying it is plagiarism google will penalize after few days google is going to bring down your website and we cannot negotiate with google on that so please make sure you are not using uh, you know copied content on your website make sure it is more aligned to your values your vision your uh, you know, goals of your business please don't copy anything the tools that we use in digital marketing so for seo we mostly recommend please get acquainted with these tools that is uh, google analytics google search console in google keyword planner google ads you know google uh, page speed insights so these are different tools that you can use for seo for social media marketing you have different analytics tools for every social media so please use them generously and spend as much time as possible till you know uh, till we get acquainted with them typical ai tools that have come into picture recently is chatgpt perplexity which is hyderabad based company we all should be proud of it no uh, sarfar seo and grammarly so these are few of the ai tools that i would recommend to use when you are do doing it for content generation again please don't use an ai tool build your content copy it and paste it no please use the ai tool to gain the knowledge you know rephrase that to suit your business needs and then use it on your website that's the best way because initially you know maybe 2 3 years back when we used to do the website development for few of our prospects it used to take one one week for us to build the entire uh, one page content but today we take only 2 hours or 3 hours because we use the ai tool and then we rephrase the content we don't use it as it is that is not advice that comes under plagiarism up to 2 years okay so because everyone is going to copy it from the web, uh, web browser and uh, it will come as a plagiarism in 2 years for whenever the leads are coming into your bucket there you should always invest on a lead management tool and for that you can if you are you know if you can afford you go for uh, salesforce or zoho crm and hubspot is also one uh, crm tool we can use for uh, uh, lead management now a question to all of you how many of you think digital marketing now can be done by one person no so digital marketing cannot be done by one person you know uh, i'll tell you the reason so a digital marketing team it is a team you need to have a team where you need uh, seo experts you need social media marketer you need a content writer you need a graphic designer and you need a web developer now this is the team structure of a, for a digital marketing team and expecting everything in one person is ridiculous <laughs> one person cannot do a graphic designing content writing you know social media marketing everything so many uh, smes actually try to hire one digital marketer and give very high expectations which is not right 
right so you can uh, think of it maybe you can give one digital marketing uh, person another two more people who are into maybe content writing and graphic designing that can help you build a proper digital marketing team this is the interesting thing i wanted to discuss with all of you this is uh, the case study where one of our customers they started their business in 2016 they are a manufacturing unit they were initially into component manufacturing they used to you know build small parts for aeroplanes uh, um, medical equipments so they used to build this nuts screws you know stamped parts precision machined components they used to build they came to us in 2020 during peak covid time 2020 2020 june they came to us and they said uh, see prashanti like uh, we we are in the middle of uh, you know manufacturing crunch no orders are coming but uh, i uh, in two years down the line we are sure that the market is going to boom and people are going to look for alter needs other than china for manufacturing so we want you to help us with marketing our uh, business so well that people will find us as an alternative to china because during covid everyone used to you know they used to stop working with chinese companies many companies have pulled out of china so that's how this company has come up saying that we want to do everything like make in india campaign is what we are working with right now and we want you to help us with promoting our business in different uh, um, regions and they were more focused on um, having their presence in us region because they had a warehouse in the us and they had a offshore uh, manufacturing center in chennai they had only one uh, you know workshop kind of a setup in 2020 in the 2016 they started 2020 they came to us we, we just started with building their uh, website revamping their website they had a website social media presence they had only 400 followers on linkedin they said we are very focused only on linkedin because most of our customers are only head of logistics or head of supply chain and these people cannot be found on facebook so we just want to do it on linkedin only so they had limited presence on uh, digital uh, space they could not reach out to their audience their keywords were not ranked they had uh, a little, very low domain authority now we started doing the marketing within 2 years they saw a good number of good amount of results you know they they saw a lot of customers were coming in though they were not uh, very relevant they were at actually being noticed that was what they saw now four years down the line today they are a multi crore company when we started they had less than 100 employees today they have 300 to 400 employees they have four uh, factories in chennai now two warehouses in the us now they have, now they have said uh, they were recently we had a conversation with them they were telling that see you have helped us so much in the digital space that today we are getting good number of clients even good number of employees are coming through linkedin they are texting us that we want to work with you you know good uh, skill so the, uh, today if you see they have four factories in chennai 400 plus employees in 2020 2024 they have 4000 plus followers on linkedin today and uh, they work with companies like has automation has automation is a company which has a s1 team okay and that is how big they have go- gone where they have were able to you know showcase their uh, expertise to different clients across the world and they have presence only in chennai for four factories are there so the business impact that we could create was 75% uh, you know en- engagement rate on uh, the website uh increase in the uh, follower growth 186% of increase in the follower growth and uh, you know organic uh, keywords 414 keywords were ranked for in the last uh, four years for them and 47 47 lakh uh, uh, organic impressions for their business this is a uh, kind of growth we can actually show if if you are moving to the digital world so what happens when people find you online right people are able to actually discover you first thing people will know okay who you are what you do what are your products services and solutions then you know uh, like as a number say that 81% of the shoppers choose to research your business online so even we do that right like when somebody we see uh, say how many of you have seen the fable street ad on facebook 
table split it is a women ethnic uh, way right so um, we go to their website we see their website and that is where we make a buying decision whether we want to buy it or not right so people will find you on google so how many of you are new to hyderabad so you have uh, yeah. like i should ask my be this question that how many of you used google maps to reach this location today yeah i used it okay <laughs> that is how people will find you if you are there on google my business page with proper you know listing uh, you know proper phone number there people will actually click on it call for directions and come to your place come to your store so that is the importance of having a presence they will not even call you they will just directly visit to your store the global reach that is how if a person sitting in the us is searching for the best uh, you know manufacturer in india they should be able to find the company that i told them No, that for which we worked, right? So growth opportunity. So the more the say, uh, more the pipeline, the more the people coming to you, the more is the growth uh, aspect there. And number of sales, like you can also you know, expect a lot of sales for your business. Yeah. So frequently asked questions. I have few questions that I want to answer voluntarily. After that, you can ask me few questions if you have any. so how many of you have uh, your business on insta uh, india mart set four five people right yeah thank you so i have my business on india mart will that be enough to have a digital presence do you have this question yeah so there are two aspects to it one thing is having a presence is okay but again you are in control of india mart tomorrow india mart goes down uh, like you know the server goes down for three days all your leads are gone they will not be able to find you those three days or whoever has come today i go to india mart and i try to look for a phone number it asks me for my phone number right so it is a trade so nobody wants to trade their number because next day onwards i'll get calls from india mart i know that so i don't want to give my number so that is how people actually your leads are left now having a website for yourself will keep everything under your control you will have a control on your data you will have the control of the people visiting to your website and uh, how to market them how to remarket them is something that you can look at the other aspect is india mart will not show you only your website will also show your competitor website will that help you in any way no right so having a stand alone website for yourself will add a lot of value for your business yeah does digital marketing help in b2b industry for it companies there are a lot of it companies honestly speaking a lot of it companies who don't know they how to do digital marketing and digital marketing certainly helps every business it is not just about b2b or b2c but every business digital marketing is a go to platform for marketing so how many of you have arrived at this place in a cab okay thank you So while you were on a cab, were you looking at the window or were you looking at your phone? We were looking at the phone. Let us be honest, <laughs> right? So people have stopped. I mean, people have reduced looking outside the window and looking more into the phone. Where if you are running an ad campaign and they they see you on the mobile phone, they are most likely to know about you. Okay, so that is important. so digital marketing really helps every business it is not limited to any b2b b2c how the strategies may vary but digital marketing is the go to platform next now the recently you must have heard about whatsapp apis right many people are calling you about asking you if you want to do whatsapp marketing it's whatsapp marketing is one channel which is really good however you need to have the whatsapp number right only if you have a database whatsapp marketing will work or it will won't work now if you keep spam spamming the customers the customer is eventually going to block you so you don't have any control on uh, how many times you uh, you can actually reach out to the customer so go to whatsapp marketing only when you have enough database in your uh, back end okay what is a good user experience on a website 
this is a very um, uh, good question that I come across very frequently. So basically, if somebody is searching for a best school in Hyderabad, and I land them on a manufacturing company page, does it make it relevant? No. Is it a good user experience? No. Okay. I land them on a school website. Good. Now the school website does not load. Right? That is not a good user experience as well. Right? So that is something very important that you need to fix your website. Make sure that the page loading time is less than three seconds. Your website page loads less than three seconds. That is important. Um, that is one thing that you need to uh, look at. What is the difference between account and the page on LinkedIn and Facebook? How many of you have this uh, question? If you have done the Facebook marketing and uh, LinkedIn marketing, there is uh, a lot of difference between an account and a page. I can have a Facebook account and I can have one Facebook account and I can have 10,000 pages. Okay, so it's, uh, especially for small and medium businesses, I would make one very big suggestion. Please don't do this mistake that you give the marketing initiative to someone and let them own everything. Don't do that. You have to have your account associated with your page and you should be the owner of it. And give the admin rights to the agencies who are working with you. Don't uh, ask them to own it, please. Because then they go away and if you want to change an agency, you will be compelled to start another page. Which is what most of the manufacturing companies, probably because of the ignorance, they do this. And we have seen that happening. So please don't do it. Own it. You are the owner of it. Give admin access or the you know full access to the page. That is very important. And um, that, is the imp that is the beauty of having a page and an account. Okay. So yeah, this is one important question that we frequently get asked is what is the ROI? When can I get an ROI on the marketing? Honestly speaking, please don't look for ROI in first six months. Okay. So digital marketing takes a lot of time and it is just like your physical marketing. People will not know in one, two days. Probably first two days, your friends, families and relatives will visit your store. Third day onwards, you are on your own. Right, so uh, same thing with digital uh, uh, presence also. ROI takes a little while. If you have say 4,000 followers on LinkedIn and if you are doing LinkedIn marketing and you have say 2,000 visits coming in every, every month, you can expect an ROI in six to 12 months of advertising campaign. But if you don't have any of this, just to, uh, at a high level, if you don't have this, please don't expect ROI in six to 12 months. It'll, it may take two to three years also. Okay, and that comes to the end of the presentation. Uh, so just a quick thing about me and my company, just one minute. So uh, I started this company in 2014 with the vision of creating, uh, you know, uh, remote working opportunities for women in technology. So that's how I started as a SaaS product development company. The seed of entrepreneurship was much before that where in 2010, my son was born and I was looking for a remote opportunity where I could balance my work, my uh, career and life, everything. Uh, I was working in the US then and all I could do was leave my 18 month old son in a daycare and go to work. I used to work for MX as a business owner. When I discussed this problem with other women, I realized that women made two choices. One was to go through the same pain that I was going through or uh, make a career decision saying, okay, I'm going to become a stay-at-home mom. How many of you relate to this story when it comes to your sisters, wives, and daughters, right? So when we were getting educated, we never made a choice. And uh, always coming first in the class was the first agenda. We used to do night outs. We used to do, you know, score good marks. But marriage should not change the equation. That is what instilled in me to build a remote working, uh, build a company which gives remote opportunity for women in technology. Four years down the line, I realized in 2018-19 that I was not able to meet the cause because I come from chemical engineering background myself and I could not train many women into technology. That's how we, might, we expanded or you know, extended our services into marketing, sales and customer support. Today we have more than 70 people working from across India, of which 70% are women who work from home. 
so that is how we have uh, we we bring we brought women from uh, sabbaticals we trained them we coached them they are uh, like right now heading my content team my sales team my design team so that is how we are uh, pleased and i would like to thank mathcom and ftpci team again thank you so much for your time thank you deepthi thank you for joining me on this meeting today thank you thank you so much prashanti i think this was a quite insightful session in digital marketing uh, so now i would like to call mr kamal kishor naidu global head of strategy and insights pxp financials uh, so so just a small insight in his journey he reads this so he reads strategy and data intelligence leveraging analytics to drive strategic decisions and optimize performances with over 20 years in hospitality i gaming and fintech he has a deep understanding of customer needs market trends and industry dynamics i think that's all for now rest you can read on the slide thank you so much thank you thank you okay so good afternoon everyone been a great audience and uh, bear with me for few more minutes uh so we have been fighting Great. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about some e-commerce uh, prerequisites, support, and payments and fraud. So I come from an international background. Uh, I worked in UK for almost ten odd years, uh, and I currently manage uh, one of the fintech strategy and insight. So some of the content that I'll be talking through uh, will have some kind of a relation to the international businesses. So. people who want to expand beyond india uh, i think that should be insightful to them um so that very visible to you uh, so i work for <coughs> so the company i represent is tsc financial and uh, they have around 1000 plus merchants so we are into b2b business uh handling their payments processing we uh, the company is also a principal member of visa and mastercard as well as uh, uh, ms last year 2023 we processed uh, 24 billion euros worth of uh, uh, transactions over our uh, platform so if you convert you can understand you know that's a humongous number almost close to uh, 2 lakh crores in indian rupees uh, Okay, so some of these things might overlap with what uh, uh, the previous speakers might have mentioned. So we will skip through very quickly. In such case, uh, the key commerce, uh, e-commerce models we all know: B two C, B two B, B two G. You also have B two B to C, and all these. And and I assume that majority of this audience here uh, is dealing with either B two C or B two B. Uh, but i like to know in case anyone is representing uh, a business which is into primarily b2g anyone okay great uh, anyone who is into export markets to uh, in in europe uk us great excellent okay great okay so yeah so we'll we'll talk through some of these concepts uh, not just from the e-commerce perspective but also into the payments and fraud if you have a aspiration to go beyond india and see you know how the regulations uh, trend there you know what are the uh, challenges that you might face what are the payment uh, possibilities or opportunities where and how the fraud actually uh, is is being managed in those jurisdictions 
Uh, so we'll go through some of the very uh, important prerequisites here. And I think it's very important to understand, you know, if you have a, uh, if you don't have a business plan that you should start working. And I think every market you should have a straight business plan, uh, depending on the go-to market and who your competitor, you know, the entire landscape might change for you. So in terms of the goals itself, uh, it provides accessibility. Do you want to go for Pan India? Do you want to enter global markets, either Africa, US, LATAM, uh, you know, Europe, UK, wherever, right? Do you clearly have your goals ready? Finance, uh, do you have the funds available to you to support all these uh, initiatives? Uh, who's your competitor? Uh, do you understand them well? Have you done some kind of a SWOT analysis for yourself? Uh, and what is your actual strategy? I mean, do you have a vision for yourself? Uh, do you understand that it is it all about making a business in a different market and no money? Or is it about actually capturing a larger uh, business in, in that segment? Success, uh, and I think it's very important. Most of us would want to do certain things, but haven't really thought of what the goals are, what are the success metrics. And unless you start to measure them, you will not know whether you have achieved what you wanted to. Marketing, uh, the digital marketing side, you know, Prashanti has spoken about it. I think every market has its own niche and uh, requirement. Operations, uh, do we have a team to handle the customer support, customer success, inventory, uh, logistics, and payment gateway? Do you have a team which wants to actually work with you in this journey? So once you have your business plan ready, you might want to have a very customized platform or a or a website that can deal with it. So I'm just listed out a couple of them here, you know, Shopify, Medinto, and Woo, and all these, you know, uh, e-commerce sites, where you can build a, a good website for yourself. But again, you know, I'm not the expert in this field, so maybe, you know, Prashanti can actually help you with that. <clears throat> so traditionally we have, I, I, and I, See that you know there is a clear distinction between the traditional marketplaces where you can uh, post your products either in Amazon, you know, Flipkart, uh, and these digital solutions, or you can go to the social media marketing website, right, which we have just spoken about. Okay, let's look at the support for e-commerce. Uh, So a few things that are very important are the customer support. And the reason being, if you are looking to scale up tomorrow and you have either a pan-India market or an international market, you have the right experienced people to deal with the problems that they would end up. Do you have the technical support? If your systems go down, if your website goes down, do you have teams who knows how to handle the payment transaction? Uh, and all these uh, aspects are very important here. Then finally, the legal and compliance side of it. Uh, the reason being, you know, every market, uh, the regulation changes, and you might want to have awareness as well as teams who can manage the compliance side of it. So this is, uh, now we're trying to get into the digital payment side of it. And as you can see, you know, the, the evolution of the digital digital payments here. Uh, so initially, it was more of a closed loop system. You know, you're dealing with uh, primarily parts, uh, network banks, uh, wallets, etc. But now that has more evolved into different omnichannel solutions. You're not trying to make payments. Majority of your payments comes through your mobile. Uh, and these are important because I think, you know, the way trends are showing uh, almost 80% of your transactions by the end of next two years or three, you know, you will see a big change uh, in the payments, in the way payments are processed. 
Uh, I've just highlighted here the B2B projected growth. This is uh, the entire uh, global trend. And we're looking at almost $56 trillion worth of business done through the B2B channel. Uh, I think it's not very clear, but that's the ecosystem of how things have changed in the Indian fintech system. And I think uh, we should take great pride in how things have evolved in the last four or five years. Uh, finally, because I have seen things how done, uh, things are done in UK, Europe, etc. And the way we caught up was tremendously, I think, you know, uh, important for India. We have seen that majority of the transactions today are done through uh, the mobile payment, you know, the UPI, and UPI itself has become a game changer. Uh, we know that, and I think you know, some of you might have read, uh, UPI has now gone global. They have presence in Singapore, they have presence in Dubai, they've done some uh, MOUs in, in France, and very recently I've been talking to uh, some of the payments association organization in UK, and they are looking to actually adopt UPI as well. So this actually brings in a lot of opportunity for players who want to actually move into these jurisdictions, uh, and UPI can actually be a, a partner for you. Okay, uh, I will start looking at fraud management, and I'm not sure you know if anyone has dealt with transactional fraud in the past, uh, but I'd be happy if someone can raise their hand and say, okay, fine, you know, we've dealt with it, or we were uh, we were hit with it. Anyone? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think it's 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 very uh, yesterday kind of a thing in terms of you know the way fraud is evolving in India, in Europe and US. You know fraud is quite evident. You know and every player kind of has to be very cautious about how they deal with fraud. And over there we have very specific tools in terms of how we identify fraud before that happens. But in India, what we have noticed is that, you know, we're still picking up, but as you have more adoption of the, the digital payments, you will certainly see that, you know, the fraud management uh, needs to evolve as well. Otherwise, it will actually hit us real bad. Uh, some of the tools that we use, uh, especially in Europe and UK, is Count, Sardine, uh, we have uh, uh, eCarta, which is a MasterCard product. Uh, I'm not well aware of if there are any particular solutions in India, but if there are none, I think there should be someone who should be uh, looking at it already. And then there is network fraud, you know, uh, fraud with relation to your data breaches, right? The network side of things. Okay, so what are the challenges in terms of uh, your e-commerce today? Uh, security threat, I think this is quite common. We have uh, managing fraud, that's another one, we just talked about it. The competition, the customer trust, logistics. Uh, and all these challenges, I think, you know, uh, the previous speakers mentioned in one way or the other. Uh, and we know how to deal with that, but certainly uh, something that needs to be focused here. Best practices in terms of uh, e-commerce success, uh, mobile ready. I think that's uh, kind of very common these days. If you're not into mobile, I think you're losing a lot of market and business already. Uh, the second one is user experience. Uh, Prashanti actually took us through uh, a very detailed session in terms of how the user experience should look like. Uh, SEO strategies, of course, the feedback. Uh, the feedback, I think uh, uh, there has to be a mechanism in terms of how you collect that information, work on it, improve, and then uh, pass it back to the customer. And the analytics and reporting side of it. Uh, there are a lot of uh, analytics uh, uh, tools available in the market today. Uh, some of the big names are Power BI. You have uh, something that we use as well. There's ClickSense, which is actually an artificial intelligence platform, and you can bring up insights within a few minutes. 
You can also deploy your own machine learning models in case you want to. So what are the future trends look like? Uh, and I think uh, I just wanted to mention about the AI enablers here. The primary reason being, if you are not using AI already, I think we're too late. One, most of the, the SMEs should start looking at is, okay, fine, if you want to scale up, do you have the right customer support? And when I say customer support team, it doesn't really mean that we have to have 50 or 100 people you know, working in your team. Uh, do you have something much more relevant for today's business? Do you have the AI chat box? You know, which actually takes over almost 80% of your uh, work. Uh, fraud management, very important in the case uh, you're accepting car transactions. Uh, uh, there's some very beautiful tools available in the market. You should uh, leverage on them. Uh, payment reconciliation, so people who are into dealing with a lot of transactions, uh, hundreds and thousands in a particular day, I think AI can actually play a big role in terms of reconciliation of those transactions here. Uh, marketing side, we have seen, you know, AI can be uh, leveraged as well. And finally, the analytics and reporting side, you know, where you can bring up your insights, understand where the gaps are, what the opportunities are, and finally, uh, take your business forward. So with that, I conclude my session. Thank you very much for listening to me, and you've been a great audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamal, sir. Uh, so now uh, we have come to the end of today's uh, workshop. So now I request uh, Sri Bipi Acharya, uh, is the retired Special Chief Secretary, Government of Telangana. Just to give a brief uh, introduction about him, he served as a Special Chief Secretary to the Government of Telangana and Director General of Dr. Nari Chennareddy Human Resource Development Institute. Developed the genome valley valley and the biotech sector in AP, India's first science cluster, and created over 20 clusters, including the financial district and pharmacy as MD of AP IIT, generating employment for over 40 lakh people. It is also uh, then established the Telangana State Tourism Development Corporation. Post retirement, he assisted ICMR with the National Animal Resource Facility in Genome Valley, as well as on industrial cluster development in Punjab and involved in civil services reforms under Mission Karma Yogi. Currently serves as the chairperson of the IRDAI Advisory Committee on Insurance Ombudsman and the chief advisor to FTCCI. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon to everyone. Yeah. Dr. Raidu, Dr. Yaram Raju. I see a number of uh, familiar faces here. In fact, I, I had told uh, Vivek that uh, my role to be only ceremonial when I had come for the valedictory to give away the mementos. I have not come here to speak. But looking at the subject and its importance for the MSME sector, which has been a passion for me for a long time. I feel that this is a sector where the MSME as such will be at peril if they don't adopt. There is no choice. If some of you know what is the option of, uh, what is the logo of uh, the tagline of NASA, failure is not an option. Here, not to adopt is not an option. You will perish if you don't adopt. MSME, whether you are a uh, micro, small, medium, whatever, particularly medium sector industries, you, you will be a dinosaur if you don't adopt these projects. Prashanti gave a very comprehensive presentation about digital marketing. I have seen many companies struggle how to reach the target audience. I've been telling them you need to uh, see how to uh, get to the market, how to, they're very good at their science, they're very good, particularly companies in genome value. Many of them are 
but excellent products very concept marketing they are not able to do that that's where the interventions which digital marketing social media all these offer are something which is very important luckily this is a sector which is always prone to innovation unlike the large industry you to surprise most of the innovation in india is by the msme sector the medium industry most of the risk taking is by the medium industry most of the job creation is by the medium industry msme sector 70 80% of the jobs dr raju will have the actual figures so this is a sector which i rate them as the biggest risk taker in indian economy after the farmers farmer is the biggest risk taker whether you like it or not he keeps on doing his work and uh, depends on the vagaries of monsoon the rains and all this but msme sector also is equally prone to vulnerabilities that is where we need to help him uh, to adopt to these new techniques so that the the industry the market stabilizes for this sector in turn they create jobs that is where adoption of technology adoption of uh, the uh, it uh, the digital space is important sooner all of us realize i wish the government or nascom come to the particular initiative to uh, uh, rather drive for the msme sector to do this because they need it not for themselves alone to help india create jobs india if today the unemployment is the largest problem in india today msme sector holds the key you cannot afford to neglect the msme sector any longer there are many states which are talking about msme policies including our state here in telangana there are many who are trying to understand how this sector potential can be unlocked this sector has tremendous potential countries in europe have seen it in the past germany has seen it in the past other european countries have seen it in the past there was a reference to uk by mr naidu so all these countries have seen the potential of this msme sector where india although we know it but we take it for granted we are more uh, it's more romantic to talk about the big industry the large sector uh, it's not fashionable to talk about the msme sector which is our dirty our hand with their problem this is where we need to break the mold and come to the rescue of the sector which needs our help so i'm happy that fftci and nascom together have done this program i wish some of our uh, members we continue to run this drive for our members ftcc itself was facing a uh, problem of digital marketing when i was joined as chief advisor i was spending some time with the membership section how do you reach out to we have 3000 members of ftcci but we have have a program like this hardly 100 turn up that to after 20 30 reminders so uh, provided it followed by lunch so so this is the problem of reaching out to our own audience ftcci has so many members and in such a relevant workshop that they don't come they don't understand the importance that is where uh, effective marketing effective target uh, reaching is very important so i wish uh, the it uh, committee which has taken this initiative all the very best and congratulate mr naidu and his team uh, vivek also for the initiative of working coordinating this thank you so much and uh, you any other ceremonial role you want me to play yeah. <laughs> thank thank you thank you so much So thank you, sir. So now I uh, request Mr. K. Mohan Rai, the chair of the ICT committee, and Mr. Yadav Raju to please present a moment to Mr. Vidya Chaya. I thought I will give to others, not to me. Don't give to me. I am part of the family. Give to the speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, sure. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I request. Uh, uh, now I request Mr. Yadav Raju, Mr. Bhipya Charya, and Mr. Uh, Mohan Rai Dud to present a comment to our speaker, Mr. Prashant. Mr. Prashant, take over, please. Big round of applause to all.
Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Revamp <laughs> our website, how to reach out, how to reach out to numbers. Three thousand numbers only on paper. But even no one comes. Our MSU is much better. Yeah. Uh, just a second, ma'am. Just a second. So, uh, now I request Mr. Mohan to please present the centenary book to Prashanti, ma'am, please. Otherwise, you become a dinosaur. Right. Uh, so, now can I request Mr. Kamal Kishore to please come up on the stage for the moment? Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, so uh, now there's not much left. So thank you so much for joining today. And I hope this sessions, this kind of sessions continue. And of course, one thing for me that takeaway was as an entrepreneur, it is like level one, level two marketing, be it SEO, be it SMM, be it SEM. We can just do it ourselves. So it is just about knowledge and expertise that we can just explore, learn, and move ahead with that because I did that in 2015. So yes, everyone else can do that as well. It's not a very uh, thing that, that we need to spend on, as ma'am already pointed, that we need to invest. Investment in terms of time, effort, and a bit of research work that we do. So thank you so much for joining. I would like to thank our chief guest. I'll not take your time. Our chief guest, NASCOM, a body, and uh, obviously all the audience members today for joining us. Please join us for that. Thank you so much.